Okay, let, let's just, uh, again, by way of background, remind everybody, you're originally from San Francisco, and before you got into yeah. this, you know, cognitive study and psychology and all that business, you, you, you want to be a rock and roller, right? I did. I, I wanted to be a rock guitar player, and I joined a, a succession of bands in the early 80s as the lead guitar player. Uh, each one of the bands, I, I'd say we kept collapsing under the weight of our own incompetence. Uh, <laughs> But eventually, after having clawed my way up to the bottom of the California music scene, uh, when the last band broke up, I decided to spend more of my time in the studio and less of it on the stage. And I, I loved being in the studio. I loved manipulating sound. And I really saw it as, as experimentation, not that different from what I do in the laboratory today, playing around with sound, with different musicians, different parts, mixing things in different ways to ultimately to yield a kind of emotional reaction in the part of the listener, somehow to combine these sounds as a painter would paint in order to make you feel something. Hmm. And as I say, in your 30s, you decide to go back to school and study cognitive psychology and cognitive science, and the result of which um, was a groundbreaking book. I'm going to let people know about it. It's called This Is Your Brain on Music. You published it four years ago. It spent a year on the New York Times bestseller list, translated into 18 languages. And in this book, you tell us why we are hardwired in the brain to love music. So let's dive into this. How do you know that? Well, there's a lot of different sources of evidence for this. One is we look inside people's brains. I mean, not literally, but we have technology now. You've seen these colorful pictures in magazines and newspapers, brain scanning technology. Uh, we can essentially track the flow of blood in a person's brain to understand which neurons are active when people are engaged in different tasks, different thoughts or different activities, mental activities. So I can put you in a scanner and I can ask you to mentally practice your tennis serve or to perform math calculations or listen to music. And we can see which parts of your brain are active, whether they're similar to other parts or others. And the emerging evidence is that there's this huge network of areas in the brain crossing the entire brain from the front to the back both halves, not just the, the right hemisphere, but also the left, that is activated by music. And some of the deepest, I'd say deepest and darkest parts of the brain in the limbic system, regions of the brain we have in common with all mammals and indeed with vertebrates, are activated by music, which suggests that music has an ancient evolutionary origin and that it, it really is part of the wiring of the human brain. If it has an ancient evolutionary origin, do we have any idea what the first ever song humans sang was? It's, you know, it's an interesting question and I think it's fascinating to contemplate that uh, the thing that di differs between say early song and early visual art is that visual art, cave paintings in particular or, or clay pots and things, they're artifactual. They leave some sort of a trace for historians and archaeologists to uncover. Music being auditory and, and just being sound waves, it's ephemeral. It doesn't leave that kind of mark on, a, on the inside of a cave for us to really know. Mm. And we've only had recording for about 120 years. So the closest thing we can do is make inferences. And you ask an intriguing question, uh, what was the first song? Well, one source of information we have is a bone flute that was carved by hominid ancestors maybe 50 or 60,000 years ago at the dawn of Homo sapiens. And we can now play this flute and hear the scale that our early ancestors were using. We don't know how they used it or what sequence of notes, but the notes that they used sound surprisingly similar to our own major pentatonic scale, that is the, the roots of blues music that we hear today.